Hey everyone, I'm Trading Man Dan with the Chart Guys. I've been trading stocks the last 14 years, and what we're seeing right now is some of the most unusual price action that I've seen in a very long time, if ever, with regards to the broader market breadth expanding and the explosion of the Russell 2000 in a very unusual manner. Let's check in on the markets. Just a note, I put out a video earlier today talking about how I used AI to make my first profitable trade with it as a tool yesterday. It's a quick video, so check our YouTube channel. I'll link it in the comments of this video as well. But today we're going to talk about the Russell 2000. Look at the volume and look at this move. This is extremely unusual. And I have been talking about extremely unusual for a long time in this melt-up. I talked about it. At the end of last year, I was saying, this is an extremely unusual move. And I was talking about the XLF 12 RSI. Essentially, we started trading as if the market was in blue sky breakout coming from months of consolidation, a couple months to set a monthly high or low. And I just kept saying, this is unusual, this is unusual, to try and hammer home, don't fight what the market is telling us. And now this is the exact same thing. What the Russell 2000 is doing is extremely unusual. The expansion and the rate of change that we've seen pouring into the Russell 2000 is only really historically ever happened from capitulation lows and from maximum fear. It doesn't happen in this way. And so again, the, the more times we see unusual, what that means to me is number one, don't use prior history to make trades based off of. Don't say, well, this usually happens, so I'm gonna do this because we are not in usual times. It means do not fight the bulls, do not try and nail the tops, and that is the way I'm, I'm leaving long runners for bulls longer. I've still got an I, I've got 60% of my IWM swing, and normally you show me that chart, I'd be all out, but this is not a normal market environment. We gap up tomorrow, I'll take a little bit more off, but this was the rotation we were looking for. I was a little bit early, but it was fortunate enough to nail the entry on the higher low day. And it took a while, you know, two weeks, my money just sat there sideways, didn't stop out, but then the absolute explosion. This is exactly what the bulls wanted to see. Anybody that's been using breadth as a bearish narrative on this move up. Now what? I mean, look at our, on our website here, go to resources, check out our tickers and heat maps. Here's the NASDAQ, some red, and here's the rotation as you got the Russell, just an absolute sea of green. And again, this is days in a row. It is unprecedented. So now what? Well, I'm holding the swing position for all time highs. I don't know if it's coming, but in this market environment, it wouldn't be shocking. We are 10%, less than 10% from a new all time high in the Russell. And it's beautiful. So long until we see clear signals to not be looking long. Again, I believe a blow-off top is coming. I will be doing a webinar talking about that blow-off top sometime in the coming weeks. I'm in no rush at the moment because ideally, IWM gets that move to the all-time highs. But uh, again, it's just a ton of strength out there. SPY, grinding up. Didn't actually, did get the all-time high today right at the close. Again, the simple statement, you know, the, the last couple of videos I've done with the broader market, if daily EMA 12 is support, the bulls have absolutely nothing to worry about. SPY has now been holding daily EMA 12 as support the entirety of June and now two weeks plus in July. So we've got six weeks riding that and nothing changes if that continues. How high can we go? We're in blue sky breakout. We've got the financial sector in blue sky, the healthcare sector in blue sky, semiconductors and the NASDAQ big tech just coming off blue sky breakout. We know things can get nutty when that is the case and things are getting nutty. And euphoria like this ends fast and hard, but again, we're not gonna try and nail tops because bears are not sneaky. We will see them coming with all major sectors dropping at the same time with big bear volume, no sign of it whatsoever. NASDAQ, trading sideways. Watch that sucker punch low. So again, the analogy for the sucker punch is you get a big bear move out of nowhere, and we knew to expect that because of the slow grind up. The video I did earlier that week said, keep an eye out for volatility coming because the volume and the ranges each day are so low, we know it's going to spike. And again, it was the catalyst of the CPI numbers, dump for the NASDAQ Thursday, rotation into the monster move of the Russell. And again, when I'm looking bearish for hedging, I'm shorting QQQ and protecting that way. And of course, now looking long with IWM in the subsectors. What are the subsectors? 
We got the crypto stocks. We'll check in on cannabis and psychedelic stocks in just a bit here and potentially a laggard EV play. So QQQ, keep it simple. If the sucker punch low, and again, that analogy is the bulls are in full control, nothing to worry about. Boom, out of nowhere, big drop, sucker punch to the face, big bear volume. When you then find a short-term support and the bounce starts to get going, can the bears confirm the downtrend? The bulls, after the sucker punch, they get their wits about them. They're ready to fight. And for now, they've been winning the battle ever since the low of that sucker punch. And we've seen that a few times where once that low is set, we then keep ripping higher. And so it'll mean a very two obviously very different things. If we break 490.73, bulls will have to pause a bit and we'll be looking at weekly pullback to potentially EMA 12 support on the NASDAQ. But if we hold that level, we're going to see new all-time highs in the short term. The number one question I have from here, when IWM sees the inevitable consolidation on the daily that's coming, and bulls will absolutely be looking for back burner bounces, hourly oversold will be the next entry for IWM if you're patiently waiting, but, or the 15-minute oversold, depending if you're aggressive. But what I want to know is when that consolidation starts, do we go inverse? Does the NASDAQ, does semiconductors and big tech Head back up to all-time highs while we see daily consolidation in IWM. Today, QQQ gave us a little bit of weakness. I had a nicely timed short just as a hedge to protect. I got all these long swing positions, so I grabbed a, a short in QQQ. It followed through very nicely, but as that drop was happening, XLF, XLV, and IWM did nothing but go up. And so I know this is not fear. We're not going to see significant bear follow through because it has to be more than just one sector if we're going to follow through. XLF, rip into all-time highs. We had the beautiful tightening range and just all bulls. Earnings season is treating it well. We've got big tech earnings coming up in the next couple of weeks. Burden is on bears. Look at XLF. We're going to look for hourly oversold. We're going to look for a daily high or low. Backburners all over the place. The best environment for backburner trades and Google chart guys backburners, if you don't know that trade strategy, is in blue sky markets. XLV got there as well finally clearing this resistance zone. Again, it's just full steam ahead for bulls everywhere as long as now we're just using trends, weekly uptrends, daily uptrends, hourly uptrends. How high can we go? I don't know. Can we go 10% higher? Sure. Why not? Are we going to drop 10% overnight? No. All right. So coin. I love the tightening weekly range. You know I like tightening weekly ranges. So coin, if we fail to break 263.80, we'll continue to tighten up. But this is a bullish setup. Bitcoin has ripped off of its lows in part due to the Trump narrative, increased probabilities of being elected and a way more bullish narrative from that camp than the Biden camp. It's bullish crypto and Bitcoin responds V-shape off of its lows and a potential monthly bull flag. This is potentially looking towards all-time highs. If you're not on Twitter following us, every Monday I put out a week ahead video where it's just a minute clip. Look into the week ahead and definitely check that out because it's been going well. Talked about the potential Trump trades, talked about how CLSK, MARA, and COIN were all top watches this week. So I grabbed all of them Monday morning and they are just exploding. CLSK, in three days, we're up almost 40%. Same with MARA. MARA, breaking out to multiple month highs. Again, if we gap up again tomorrow, I've got to take some profit in all these names because it's just getting silly, but just monster moves. And if Bitcoin heads back to all-time highs, I'm looking for MARA to go 34 plus. I'm looking for CLSK to break this sideways range and head back up towards 24 but that's, of course, only if Bitcoin does keep this move going. And right now, the names that are ripping the most are the names that are most inverse the dollar. Russell 2000, gold and silver, and the, mi the metal miners, and crypto. And keep an eye on the dollar. We'll get there in just a moment. At this point, if you want to chase for long entries, don't. You have to wait for daily consolidation and scout those daily higher lows. And if this euphoria is going to continue, hourly backburners will mark daily higher lows into continuation. MSOS, so solid bull move today in some of these cannabis stocks. CGC had a break yesterday. Again, they're coming from extremely weak standpoints. 
They're going up because we're coming towards the, co the end of the comment period. I believe it's the 22nd for rescheduling. So people thinking, hey, once we get to the end of the comment period, maybe we get official rescheduling. Uh, but MSOS, you know, I see this bull move up and I put on my bear glasses and say, okay, what? You know, nice, nice pop trying to follow along IWM. What might be standing out here? This is a potential hourly rising wedge. So if bears are going to take back over, this would break bearish. If we're going to negate it, we need to go 810 plus. Really, we just got to get over 820. 820 is the most important resistance from here because that's the highest level that we've seen in six weeks. So is cannabis going to follow along? It's trying. It's just a laggard at this point and much weaker. Psychedelic space is responding to the biotech sector strength. The biotech sector is doing what IWM is doing to a certain degree, just straight up. And MNMD, we are watching for the monthly high or low here in the weekend cannabis videos, falling wedge type of pattern, grinded on the $7 support and a really nice 20% move off that level. And all of these psychedelic names are responding to the biotech sector strength. NIO is the name I entered long today looking for a laggard bull break. We have tailwinds. What are the tailwinds? Tesla's extremely strong. We'll look at Tesla in just a moment. IWM is extremely strong. Looking at NIO, it's done nothing but grind down. Is it time? for the market to get in a fervor of throwing money at the wall for anything that hasn't been running yet. Maybe, definitely worth paying attention to. You know, I don't wanna buy IWM right now, but NIO hasn't been running, so we'll see. The target for the trade is ideally we got a first break bull over 492, which was a double top today, and then 504, I entered at 481. I will exit if the daily high or low is lost, but ideally the target's going to be getting over 6.05 and really get over the 6.30s, trying to hit high of six months, last six month highs for this longer term trend change. A lot of work to do. Tomorrow's a pretty important day. Chinese stocks overall still not participating much. Here's FXI, just sideways the last six weeks. Baba's not doing anything much, big picture. Are Chinese names going to play some catch-up? We'll see, but giving an IO a shot. In this market environment, I'm now an aggressive bull, have been, because the market is telling us aggressive bulls are getting rewarded. And so that means the, the trade I made with AI yesterday in that video that I talked about, that's an aggressive trade. My entry in NIO is an aggressive entry. And it's because I've got a lot of profit cushion over the last couple of weeks on this move that I can be a little bit more loosey-goosey. And when you get in a market environment like this, that's what's going on with a lot of traders in terms of, you know, how are we still running? Who's buying up here? Well, people willing to risk profits to look for more. Dollar. Bears would love, dollar bears. And again, if you're bullish crypto, gold, market, you would love to see this be a little inverse cup and handle. There's clearly a wall of support in the upper 103s. If that level breaks, the monthly lower high is very clearly set. And we then look for the potential of this monthly equilibrium to continue tightening up. But knocking on the door of that key support. And while that's happening, congrats to the gold bulls, all-time highs. As long as weekly EMA 12 is support, the bulls are in full control. We grinded it for a while. And here we go. Another leg up. Miners, beautiful explosion. Miners hitting multiple year highs. Who's stronger, gold or silver? XAU, XAG chart shows us it's tightening up. Watch the direction that this breaks. If this breaks bull, it means gold's the better bull. If this breaks bear, it means silver is the better bull. I've got silver exposure. I've got gold and silver exposure, but in terms of paper exposure, I've got a lot more silver exposure. And it hasn't broken out yet. But nice back test and hold a daily EMA 12 and trying to get back to that 32.52 recent high. We are currently, what, 4% away? As long as weekly EMA 12 is support, the bulls don't have anything to worry about. Oil, daily downtrend confirmed. We knew this weekly consolidation was inevitable because we were coming off the low and the bears had a nice clear level to play off of. The big question from here, is this a monthly lower high? 
for this equilibrium to keep tightening up. Oil volatility is coming to end this year when this tightening monthly range breaks. Ideally, I'd like to see it tighten up a bit more. I haven't traded oil in forever, but if this gets nice and clear, I potentially will on the break. Again, establish those game plans. The euphoria is definitely kicking around. Disbelief. But I will believe the bulls and the price action as long as they keep proving it. And they've been doing a really good job of proving it all year. I promise I'm not just a permable. I will flip when it is time. And I won't nail the top. And I'm not expecting to nail the top. And again, as I've been saying, that is a major reason that I've not been fighting this move is because I have given, I've given away the hope of trying to nail the top because I know that is not a realistic expectation. All right, I hope you're well. Do good things. Back burners on the menu all over the place. Let's see if Bitcoin can keep shaping up. Strength, definitely gonna be taking some profit into euphoria. IWM, MARA, CLSK, profit taking on the table for me, especially if we gap up tomorrow. Tesla, forgot it. So Tesla's a nice tightening range. This is a top watch into the next into the end of this week. We've got our high, low, lower high, and now trying that higher low. This is all bulls. You want a simple statement? If daily EMA 12 is support, the bulls have absolute complete control. Held it on the gap down. And again, this break is coming here. And now that I'm long in IO, I want this to break bull because that would definitely help. Maybe I'll grab a, a long position if it breaks bull. Don't forget the most important level here, three month equilibrium resistance at 300. Are we going to reject and keep tightening up or break bull? Congrats bulls, establish those game plans. Don't get greedy, don't chase. You have to be patient and wait for those back burners and do good things. Mm-hmm. <laughs>